glad that you joined us today. I know how to fix this. Stand back. What are you going to do with that boomerang? <laughs> singing the songs from Zoomerang. It's called Zoomerang. All right. You ready? You ready? Yeah. I think you're right. ready. Let's get some Zoomerang. Time to Zoomerang. Got the Boomerang. Yeah. All right. Come on and join the gang and grab your Boomerang. Let's Zoom, Zoom, Zoomerang. Let's Zoom, Zoom, Zoomerang. Come on. Where is Jesus now? 
Does anybody know where Jesus is living now? You know? Heaven. Heaven, that's right. He's in heaven now. He's up there in heaven, and he is waiting for us. And so tonight, the place that we want to look at it, that we're that, that we're going to look at is Coover Petty, and I should have came up here and found it. Oh, it's easy to find. Coover Petty, right here. And this place right here, of course, where the dingoes are mostly at, is a mining town. It is a town where they go and they get, and I'm going to have to look up this word because I can't pronounce it. Let's see, it is, they get opals. Opals. And opals are, a, are mined and they are gems. So like a shiny gold or shiny red or blue gem, and that is what they mine there. They mine a lot of those there and sell them in jewelry stores and stuff like that. So a lot of money comes out of this town. But what's interesting about this town is it's all underground. The whole town is underground. It is too hot there in Australia for them to live on the outside, on the, on the surface. It gets too hot. And so everything, when you go underground in the mine shaft, you actually have your grocery store underground. You have your church underground. They have several churches apparently there. They have their, uh, they get water down there. They have, they have all they need underground like a town, just like Hanover. Could you imagine all of Hanover being underground? And you came to church tonight and you had to go in a hole and go underground to come to church? I mean, that would be pretty crazy. That would be awesome. But what what's makes it so cool is that all this money that they get from the gym, from the gyms that they, they, they find in the mine there, it takes everybody working to find these things. You see, if they were just down there and they didn't have somebody running a restaurant or bringing the food to them, well, they would starve to death down there, wouldn't they? We wouldn't want to be down there without, without a place to live and stay. And if it's too hot to go up, well, we would want somewhere to go and hang out that evening. I mean, who likes to go hang out with friends in the evening time? Well, if you lived in a mine and all you could do was look in the darkness, that would get pretty boring, right? Well, everybody has a purpose. Some people are there not to mine, but there to help the workers, to keep them entertained. And, and everybody has a part. And so in this small little town, everybody has a part in doing something. And so I want to look, and we're going to look at our Bibles and learn some things about what, what happened after Jesus was raised. I'm not even using this thing, see? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but tonight we're going to look in Acts, Acts chapter 1, in verse 6. It says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season which the Father hath put in his own power. But he shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon him. And he shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Now you notice here that he told the disciples, You're going to be witnesses. You're going to be witnesses to those. That means he, they, that God was, Jesus was telling them, I want you to go out and tell people about me. I want you to go out and tell people about what you've seen here and how you've seen me and what you want me to do. And so we find in verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. <coughs> And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heavens? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So could you imagine being one of the disciples standing there? Jesus is talking to you, and he's telling you, you know, I want you to go out and tell people about what you've seen here. And then all of a sudden, he starts to go up in heaven. I mean, just all of a sudden, he starts floating. I mean, what if all of a sudden I just started floating and started going up to heaven? That'd be weird. I mean, I, I would be a little, like, blown away. Like, oh, my, wow. But you know what? The only person who can do that is Jesus. And so they were standing there going, wow. We get to watch Jesus go to heaven. We get to watch this. And they're standing there looking up. I mean, I mean, like, <laughs> he's not even there anymore. And they're still just. And all of a sudden, these two men appeared. And you know what? They were angels. These angels came down. And they said, hey, why are you guys staring? He's gone. 
There's nothing to stare at anymore. You're just staring up into space. My wife says that to me all the time. She's like, what are you staring at? I don't know. I mean, that's, I, I catch myself just staring off into the sunset sometimes. You just, I don't know what I'm thinking about. And that's what they say. What are you staring at? Hey, get to work. you got a job to do. You need to go out and tell people about Jesus. And so that's what, 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 what we talk about, how our lives are important, is because you have a job to do. You have something that God wants you to do. And that's to tell other people about Him. That's to tell people about Jesus and how He has risen and gone to heaven. And He's waiting for us. You know, if you get saved and you accept Him as your Savior, you believe that He died on the cross, believe that He died and rose again and went to heaven, one day you're going to die. And if you get saved, and you get to go to heaven and be with Him. And you're going to live for an eternity. And, and how long is an eternity? Does anybody know how long eternity is? Forever. Forever. Eternity is forever. I mean, can you even think about that? That's hard to even think of. Eternity. You know, you, 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 you've all, you know, maybe grew up watching some superhero show where the bad guy wants to get some type of drink and drink the potion and become immortal where he never dies. Well, guess what? We're not going to necessarily become immortal here on earth where our body walks around for the rest of our life. But one day, when Jesus decides it's time for us to go to heaven with him, we get to go up there and live there forever with him. And you can think of the most, your most favorite thing to do here on earth. Think of whatever it is that you love to do. I love to fish. Anybody love to fish? Anybody love to play sports, baseball, basketball, any of those? Think about those things. And guess what? Heaven's going to be a lot better than that. It's going to be better than any of those things. It's going to be better than playing sports. It's going to be better than riding your bike or playing with games or watching movies or whatever it is. You're going to have a whole lot more fun up in heaven. And you will never die. You'll never, you're, you'll just be up there forever. And you think, well, what if I get bored up there? You're not going to get bored up there. You're going to have fun. You're going to be with Jesus. Maybe he'll let you float around a little bit. I don't know. I mean, maybe we get to go around and float up around in heaven and, and play football while we're floating or something. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know. We can do back flips up in the air and catch the ball or stuff. I mean, we're going to have so much fun up there in heaven. But that's what Jesus came in to do. The next verse we're going to look at is 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, and we're going to look at what Jesus means when he means that we're all important, of what, what, what he wants from us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verse 12, it says, For as the body is, in, is, is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not of the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? So, I mean, if your foot says, Look, I'm not the hand, so I'm not important. I don't want to be a part of your body. Well, who all needs feet? How'd you get here today? You had to walk, right? You had to climb up into the van. If you didn't have feet, you wouldn't be able to walk. So, it would. what if your eye said, Hey, I don't want to be a part of your body anymore. And all of a sudden, you don't have eyes anymore. Well, at least you wouldn't have to look at me anymore. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to see at all. You could go live in the mine and try to get around like a bat. <laughs> and not be able to see at all. But we find Jesus is saying, hey, our body is important. Have you ever hurt your finger? Have you ever hurt just the tip of your finger? Man, I smashed my hammer. Or smashed, <laughs> I smashed my finger with a hammer the other day. And I caught just the tip of the pinky. And you know what? It caused my whole hand to hurt. I mean, it was just like, it hurts so bad. Have you ever hurt something on your leg and it just feels like after you hurt one spot, the whole leg hurt? <clears throat> and then it goes all the way up and tells your brain, hey, that hurts. Because you feel it, right? It's important. 
Or you ever hurt your finger so bad you had to wrap it up with, with like a band-aid or tape or something like that and you go to try to grab something and you can't grip it because your fingers are wrapped up? Or maybe a broken arm and your arm's in a cast or something like that and you're trying to do things one-handed? It's hard. You learn, wow, this is hard doing things one-handed. Imagine if your fingers were gone and somebody threw a ball at you and you're supposed to catch it. Try catching a ball with no fingers. You could, I mean, you'd have to try to grab it with your arms and do all kind of funny things. Maybe catch it with your leg or something. I mean, we, we have to figure out things. Every part of our body is important. I mean, who loves to smell a good apple pie or a good chocolate cake whenever it's being baked? Mm -hmm. Smells good, don't it? We went to Chick-fil-A today. Oh, nothing smells better than a chicken. When you get in the Chick-fil-A, you just smell it. Oh, it smells good. You're ready to eat. I was starving. All that I had was a banana all day. I walked into Chick-fil-A and it was just like I was in heaven. It smelled so good. <laughs> but you know what? If I didn't have a nose, I'd have walked in there and unfortunately I wouldn't have been able to smell all that good stuff. I wouldn't have, if I didn't have hands, I wouldn't be able to pick the chicken up. I'd have to eat like, an, like a dingo and try to eat with them. maybe, you know, well, they got better hands than that, I guess. So if, if I didn't have a hand, I couldn't eat me like a dingo. I'd have to eat. I don't know, like the platypus, and use my bill to pick it up or something. But everything we have is an important part of our body. Let's see, action. So we have all of our organs in our body. We have our heart, our lungs. One of those is the kidney. <laughs> something else up there. <laughs> and all of those things in our stomach are important. They all have a job to do. Don't know where they're at or what they're doing, but they all have jobs to do. So now imagine the heart's gone. Now our heart is what pumps blood through our body. That I do know. Our heart is what keeps us pumping and keeps us alive. Now what if that heart was gone? What would be pumping the blood through our body? What would be keeping us alive? Could you stay alive without a heart? No. No, no you couldn't. Well, what if... Oh, well, I didn't even see the brain. The brain. It's got a brain. That proves we didn't... I'm not pretty much nothing up here. Anyway, what if you didn't have a brain like I do? I have proof that you can make it without a brain. <laughs> but you need one. You need one. If we want to be successful in life, we need a brain. It helps you to think. It helps you to comprehend everything that you memorize. You memorize this verse, and you come up here and stand. And whether you were cheating by looking at the clock or looking over here, hopefully you were, was it? And hopefully you were remembering. And if you remember that, well, you got a prize for it. If you didn't have a brain, you wouldn't be getting a prize and you couldn't remember it. So it's important. Now, what if you didn't have the rest of these things? You're, 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 what if you didn't have your lungs? Man, I, sh I should have went to a doctor or something. Like that. <laughs> what if you didn't have your lungs? Your lungs look awesome. You couldn't breathe. Try not breathing. How long can you hold your breath? All right, now everybody's got to stop breathing before you pass out. <laughs> all right, you can breathe. So, but think about it. What if all of a sudden, what produces air in you, all of a sudden wasn't there anymore? And you couldn't breathe. You'd be sitting there trying to grasp for air and gasp for air and you couldn't do it. And therefore, no matter if your heart was pumping blood or not, you wouldn't be getting air, which keeps us alive. So all these things are important. So not only is our hands and our feet and all these things important, but so is everything in us. And we are made in such a way that you cannot explain it. God put everything specific in us for reasons. I mean, God gave us all different eye colors, all different hair colors, you know, even our fingers. You ever did your fingerprint, put your finger on a, on a dirty glass or something, press down, and you saw your fingerprint? You ever done that? You know, each and every one of us has a different fingerprint. And that's the case, if you do something bad, we can find you. I will find you, all right? So don't do nothing bad, because we will find you, because of your hands. So, but we all have fingerprints. We all have something different with our body. And you know what you can do with your hands and your feet and your mouth? Who here brought a visitor today? Who brought a visitor? 
Y'all brought visitors? You didn't bring up visitors. What's your email address? <laughs> Anybody else bring a visitor? You bring visitors over here? How did you bring those visitors? You, you, you had to invite your friends. You had to go and ask them, hey, you want to come to vacation Bible school with me? But you know what you were doing? You were being a tool for God. You were using your, your mouth or your hands to say, hey, come to Bi vacation Bible school with me. Come to vacation Bible school with me. And so this verse right here, Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Hey, he, he, he created us. He built us. And he put everything in inside of us. He put our hands together and our feet together so we could go out and serve him and help him. You know, you can help by picking up the trash before you leave tonight. You can. You know, they, they talked the, the other night. They found one of these little, little alligators all torn apart. And they were all sad and weeping up here about it. I don't know. But they were crying over a little alligator, you know. But you know how you could have helped? You could have saw that, and whether you did it or not, you could have reached down and picked it up and put it in the trash or wherever it needed to be. Maybe it needed to be buried. I don't know. <laughs> but you could have done that, and that would have been a big help. That would have done something that someone else didn't have to do later on. You could go out and, and help your parents clean your rooms. Ryder's got to go home tonight and clean his room. Yeah, got to clean our rooms. Keep your keep your, your your stuff put away. That's all big things that you can do, and it honors God. Because God says to honor your father and your mother, to honor your parents. So therefore, if He made you, and then He told you what to do, He wants you to do it. And you can use your hands to go out. Yesterday morning, I went out up into the Baltimore area, and I went out on the streets, and I passed out tracts to some Jewish people. And passed out tracts to not just Jewish people, but all kinds of people. I passed out quite a few tracts and talked to them. But you know what? I had to use my hands to grab the tracts and to pass them out. I had to use my mouth to talk to them. Because some people would ask, what is this? And if I just handed it to them and didn't tell them what it was, they might not take it. And you know what? I didn't, I didn't have to do much. I didn't stand there and talk long sometimes. Sometimes I just walked up and said, hey, can I give you something to read? And I gave them a tract. And you know what was in that track? It talked about Jesus. And you know what it was doing? Being a witness. Going out and telling people. You can go out and pass out tracts. You can go and talk to people. And, and, and invite your friends to church. Who all is ready for school to start back? Nobody's ready for school to start back? I don't blame you. Some of you are. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, when school starts back, you're sitting next to your friends in class, not while class is going, don't be talking. But after class or on the playground, you can say, hey, why don't you ask your mom if you can come to church with me tonight on Wednesday night and come to our, our youth class. We have lots of fun. And you know what you're doing? You're using what God gave you, your body, your mouth, to witness for him, to be a testimony for him. Everything that God has given us is important. You are important. It doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you live or what your family's like. You are important to God. And God wants to use your body. God wants to use you to be a witness for Him. I mean, think about it. Jesus, who died on a cross, suffered for us, then went in the grave and died where that would have been the end for us. All of a sudden, three days later, he gets up from the grave. And he's a lot. He's, I mean, that is how awesome God is. That is how great he is. And all of a sudden, he chooses you. And you. And you. And he chooses you. And he chooses you. And he chooses every single one of you to be his workers. To be his, his body. His body of Christ here on earth. Maybe, maybe you're the foot of Jesus. <laughs> maybe you're his finger. <laughs> he wants you to be his hand, to reach out. See, God doesn't actually need that. God is all powerful. But he wants you to be used. He wants to come down and, and be used by you. Uh, let you be used by him. 
And so I hope tonight that we learn, and just like you've been learning all week long, every one of you is important. And as we learned about all the different animals, you've learned about all the animals there in Australia. I mean, most of these animals, we, we, we don't see unless you go to a zoo maybe here in America. But we don't see these type of animals. But God put them in Australia. I mean, the dingo. Down here where it's so hot that people have to live underground. And yet the dingo can handle it and live down here and, and somehow live out there and be okay. God put them in a special place. He didn't put my dog down there. My dog couldn't handle it. My dog would probably fall over dead from the heat. Or it probably wouldn't figure out how to open the doors to get around there. But the dingo can. The dingo can open the doors and get around. God put them there for a reason. The kangaroo, the platypus, the platypus that looks so funky and weird. That's, that's kind of me over here, you know. He's still trying to figure out where his brain's at. <laughs> but God put him there for a reason. And you know what? I know I talked about it and I couldn't remember everything up there. But God has a plan for me too. And God wants to use me. And as, as Brother Tony was saying, I'm a missionary. That's what God's called me to do. I'm a preacher. I try to preach. But you know what? I'm not worthy. I don't know what I'm doing sometimes, clearly. But you know what? God wants to use me. And I want to be used by God. Guess what? It's awesome when you start getting used by God. It's, it is great to serve God and let your body be used. And so as we close um, tonight, um, we'll just close with a word of prayer and then do some question and answering, I guess. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. If you have a hat, take it off and we'll pray. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this day, and I thank you, Lord, for my experience tonight. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just help us all to, to want to be a, a body for you, Lord, someone to be used by you, that we would go and tell people how you died on a cross and rose again and went to heaven and are there waiting for us, Lord, and how we can have eternal life, Lord, that lasts forever, Lord, and Lord, that we can just be, be someone who goes out and tells people about you and invites people to church, Lord. Help us all as, as we close the rest of our uh, the time tonight, Lord. And as we come on Sunday, Lord, allow us to bring family with us to watch and see and just that people would remember everything they've learned this week, Lord. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs>
see what we're going to learn at BBS next year. But you know where else you can learn all that cool stuff? Where? Right here on the Online Gene Show. Oh, yeah! It's a good Sunday. We'll see you next week. Bye! Hey, we'll be back on our regular